Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Solutionaries, providing a conscious narrative on current issues. I am King Muse to the seventh power. And I am Arthur Felipe Morris. Today, we will discuss the book Everyone Plays Chess, Part 1 and 2, authored by Mr. Felipe Morris, available on Amazon. And we will look at how his vision came to him and how we can look at his literature as a tool of liberation. Uh, my first question Mr. Felipe Morris, was what was the inspiration behind writing the book? Um, my key inspiration behind writing the book was reading other urban fiction authored by females and getting a constant female perspective in relation to everything, how men think, how men react. And when I would read those books, I would see clearly that men don't react that way and I will un I came to the understanding that we needed a male vantage point in a lot of these books also a lot a lot of the books today glorify the street life mm -hmm. without showing any pitfalls and the view of the street life is so fantastic that it almost makes it like a Cinderella fairy tale. And I wanted to bring that grit and that truth back to the urban fiction game. Mm -hmm. Well, how do the uh, how do you feel that the characters in the stories relate to us and how should we how would you want the reader to look at it from your from your eyes? I think nowadays we live in this era of perfection where you have men expecting women to be perfect, women expecting men to be perfect. Um, you know, from a male perspective, a lot of people think that the males are looking for this physically perfect women. From our perspective as men, you know, we feel like we're being judged on this scale of character perfection. And a lot of the books are written basically from a point of if is either a male is perfect or he isn't. If he isn't perfect, he's a fuck up. If he's perfect, he's Prince Charming. Mm. So I wanted to show not only men, but women in a less than perfect light, but a more realistic light. Mm. So you feel like um, basically there's really no narrative from the male's perspective in, in mainstream media whatsoever? Well, if you're talking about mainstream media in general, you get more of a female perspective and a homosexual perspective, but you don't, you really don't come across that strong African-American male perspective. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I would agree. I, I would say that an example would be the TV shows and who's producing them, right? Yeah, all of, most of the shows. Yeah, exactly. You know, most of the shows that everyone flock to right now are either African American women, written by African American women, or homosexual African American men. You That's never get that honest African American male perspective. Exactly. Exactly. Do you do you find it difficult to write from a female's perspective? Um <clears throat> yes and no. I think writing for female characters can bring a lot of backlash mm. because in a way you have to show women how you view them as a man or you open up the door for women to see themselves in relation to men versus how they think they're being viewed. A perfect example of that is some, it's just something that's physical. Like nowadays, you don't see a lot of women ask a man, how do I look? You'll see a lot of women make a post and say, I know I'm bad or you see it, you know I'm cute. <laughs> but it's never asked of a man, like, do you think I'm cute? And so from my perspective of writing, I have to display the real, mm -hmm. which you might not be cute as you think you are. Right. And so, but you'll actually get 
a more realistic view and it'll hit home a lot more. You might not like it, but you'll feel it. So I was going for the feel more than the like. Right. You know, we're in the like era where everybody wants to people please. I was trying to capture the feel. That's right. That's more authentic, I would think. Yes. So so what do you think about how can you see how your 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 book can tie into current events that's happening today? Like, is there any correlation or parallels that you can see that can that can play into today's without giving too much away about the book? Um, yes, that was another one of my purposes for writing the books was to show the real and relationships mm -hmm. and how people can come together and build together versus arguing over the typical things that we see and hear every day. He cheated or um, he doesn't have enough money. She's not cute enough. She's not built like a video vixen. I wanted to show human beings once again working together, especially with being black, I mean, with being African Americans because we are the pyramid builders. And those, even if the, if, 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 even if only men built the pyramids physically, they still had to run those ideas past their women when they got home. I can't, I can't imagine that back then, the conversation when a man came home, these master builders, these master masons came home to women that wanted to discuss cheating and what picture he liked <laughs> on social media. <laughs> right. The conversations had to be deeper than that. Exactly. And I wanted to take people back to that. From a current event perspective, a current perspective. Right, right. Yeah, that's something that uh, Millie Fuller talks about is just not spending any time of your day wasting it. And, you know, I think it's just a waste of time to discuss who's said what or who's doing what if it's not something that can be uh, something positive can come out of that. And especially if you're going to stay anyway. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to leave a person, what's the use of arguing? consistently about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. If they're not changing, you leave them. But there's nothing to gain by, like you said, wasting valuable time arguing what they're doing. Go. Yeah, so I would say that, you know, one of the things that I see going up and down my timeline is just people dealing with their emotions as it relates to relationships as opposed to looking at it from a logical standpoint. Um, I just want a man who will do this and do that and do the da, da da da. But from a man's perspective, it's looking at it from a logical angle. And I think that uh, we lose a lot because we try to continually make women happy through their eyes. And the reason why I think it's important that we have representation in some form or fashion um, is because men's happiness is simple. And I think that when women come into our happiness, they'll be a lot more happy. And I think that's a beautiful thing that Beyonce did. Uh, I want you to elaborate on that. As far as what she did with the Super Bowl uh, show, she was the one who came up with the independent woman, bills, 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 single ladies, you know, and all that information that got put out. And I think that at that particular point, and, and I want you to elaborate on this, is that they took a stance on it and it seemed like the reaction that they got back on the stance that they took in relation to what Beyonce was talking about is what caused this whole, I'm not blaming everything on her, but I'm just saying that mainstream rhetoric that was going on, I think it contributed to our issue and it's good to see it come back, but, you know, full circle. Yeah, um, I remember some years back I can't remember remember the brother that was building on it, but he was discussing the song "Independent" and how, you know, all of the women were screaming "Independent" up and down the timeline and in the streets and in the clubs. Mm -hmm. And I can remember the sister that made the song "I Need a Sponsor," mm -hmm. but a few months later, you know, the song was sponsoring everybody. All of a sudden, needed a sponsor. <laughs> So it's kind of important uh, to understand just how music can sway 
the minds of the people. Mm. You know, I grew up in a time where a drug dealer wasn't the good person. You know, when you had the guardian angels and stuff like that, and it was um, up with hope, down with dope, and stay away from the drug dealer. And now it's like, stay away from the hard working man. Mm. Because he's not a drug dealer. He's no good to you because he's not a drug dealer. Is that because you think that the, the legit money is too slow? No, I think that it's just a projection. I think when you have um, your social thought process, like the thought process of the large majority of the people being dictated to you by your enemy, yeah, they're not going to give you anything positive. They're going to push something on you that's seemingly positive, knowing that it's going to be destructive in, in your reality. You know, just like um, our brother Jeff with his book, um, Dumb and Down, he touched on Rick Ross being a former correction officer telling you to sell dope straight off the iPhone. But that's the jam. Or the other day I was having a discussion with um, a couple of my female cousins and a few women on social media. And we were talking about men degrading women and not telling women that they're beautiful and things like that. And um, I pointed out that, but you dance to songs that say things like, suck my dick, you weak, ugly bitch. And that's the jam. Yeah. That's live. That's what you dance to. Yeah, and the thing is, is that um, what I find in field research, because I have over 30 years of dating women. I know you have years of dating women. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we can basically come from that standpoint. And women, it seems as though they have these these ills and, and the sickness about them. And when you try to give them the medicine of the real, um, it's, it's an issue. But it's like you have to have some some type of logic to put towards the emotion. And it, the problem is going to repeat itself until you come to some type of solution. And so that's why I was wondering if you had a problem with speaking from the female's perspective earlier on. Because I know that anytime a man says that and holds that mirror up, sometimes a woman will completely, your whole argument is done and finished. Or I'm not going to even finish the book because I'm upset. But then again, with a book, if you get lost in the narrative, then you can kind of forget that it's coming from a male's perspective. Yeah, see, that's the that's the beauty of literature where I can make the women like the male character. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're more prone to listen to what he says. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're dealing with social media and things like that or... Even in real life, if, if a woman says something about me, you know, like he used to date my friend, he ain't shit. You feel that same way about me, even though you don't know the whole story behind me and your friend. You just know I used to date her. She say I ain't shit. Mm -hmm. I'm probably telling my friend she ain't shit, mm -hmm. you know. Right. But since you have this tainted perception of me, anything I say will be tainted. Right. And it's the same way with when you're dating or, you know, in a relationship in some sense, a uh, sense is that um, a man, when he tries to tell a woman how he needs her to be in relation to him, and then in turn, he's going to offer up what he can be to her. And she should do the same. And then that way they could have some sort of balance. Right. But if you have one party telling the other person what you have to be to be with me, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to go all downhill every time. It is going to go downhill because with a man you're dealing with pride, and with a man you're dealing with him being the head of the situation. And I don't know, I personally don't know any woman who wants to be the head of any relationship. They might say they do, but they're not trying to be the provider, the security, and all the things that we as uh, men are supposed to do so that the woman can be what she needs to be and be the fullness of a woman. That's true, man. And, you know, <laughs> this is going to sound kind of off the wall, but it's a true statement. Because one of the things that um, writing forced me to do is become observant. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely observant, and I hang on people's conversations. 
So a guy like me, if I'm just breezing through a hairdresser or sitting at the mall and some women sitting at a table talking next to me, I'm literally memorizing the conversation and I'll play it back to myself over and over again. But what I've come to find is that a lot of those women, like you said, who want to be that strong, I'm above my man, I'm the head of my man, I'm the head of the household, are those same ones that want to be choked during mm. sex or mm. fake raped and stuff like that. So they want to be subdued. Mm -hmm. So once again, here you have this societal ill where you have the society in your head and then you fighting it, fighting that against your nature. Right. So it's like your nature and, and what society tr is trying to push on you is pushing away from each other like opposite sides of a magnet. Right. And that's why we don't have that cohesiveness. Right. Yeah, I, and I, that's why I say, like, I really feel like if we get back to our true nature of who we are, things will be a lot easier because, you know, in ancient times, there was no such thing as feminism and there was no such thing as women's liberation because even the pharaoh, the pharaonic line came down matrilineal, came down the woman's line. And so we appreciated women and women appreciated men. We love women coincidentally because they were women, that's what we were attracted to, but they weren't held down or had to feel any kind of way because they were women. And it just seems as though nowadays we have this outside enemy dictating our culture to us and dictating what we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do, which is why I was saying as far as the independent woman and, you know, bills, bills, bills and things of that nature, that infused into our culture. Much, much like um, when you had the song No Scrubs, when that song came out, like, cats did not want to be caught in the passenger side of somebody's car trying to talk to a female. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, subconsciously, we was like, oh, we got to get on our shit. Right. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. So that's why I think that nowadays, I mean, right now we had the Super Bowl situation with Beyonce, uh, her coming out in the Black Panther attire, and it caused a lot of issues, and it definitely gave a ripple effect. And what I found interesting about that is, you know, a couple of days after she did that at the Super Bowl at the Grammys, Kendrick Lamar did his performance. But it seems as though the backlash, so to speak, came on Beyonce's performance so much more than it did on Kendrick's performance. Her being a black female, him being a black male, that was one time it didn't come on him. And I found that interesting, too. Well, for one, um, I'm a fan of hip hop and I'm a very observant person and I pride myself on being somewhat well read. So I've been hearing these messages in the music, even with Jay-Z, you know, with mentioning Murakesh and he had the song Heaven. Where, you know, he starts it off with the arm, leg, leg, arm, head, you know, a lot mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And the whole We Made It remix with him and Jay Electronica where Jay-Z says, um, I'm ready to chase the Yaku back in the caves. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's obviously been on Jay-Z's mind. Right. But as a African-American male in a white male supremacist society I think Jay-Z came to understand that as powerful as he would like to believe he is mm -hmm. the white man can crush him at any given time but with the careful study of history mm -hmm. I think he came to understand that they can attack a woman in the same manner mm -hmm. which is the beauty of the black woman and man, and this is going back to how you touched on ancient times. From my studies, I understand that there wasn't a separation. And even when you deal with other races of people, they still deal with the family unit as a whole. Right. There's no man, woman, it's family. You know, there's no man, woman, why my child over here doing this? No, it's our family's messed up. You know what I'm saying? Your woman's not messed up. Your husband's not messed up. Your son's, your daughter's not messed up. Our family is messed up. You know? So, he understands that if Beyonce is his woman, she's the 
other 180 of his 360, meaning when you can stop his 180, she can still flow and come back around and pick him back up on that path. Mm -hmm. So I think he may have impregnated her thoughts mm -hmm. with his. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sitting around, thinking about it, and they both concluded, like, babe, they can't take you down. No way for them to take you down. And then he, even if they take you down, I'll still be standing here for you. Mm -hmm. You gone out there and do that. Mm -hmm. And they shocked the world. And so now I think when Kendrick came back around and done the same thing, I think they didn't want to make a big deal out of it because now they're afraid. You know, if we attack Kendrick, all it's going to do is keep making these artists do this. <laughs> right. You know, because if we give it light, you know, we live in a like attention era. Right. You know, so whether it's negative or positive attention, if anything gets attention, it runs. It's viral. Mm -hmm. You know, so why would we attack Kendrick and let more of these militant stances through music and artistry go viral? Mm -hmm. You know, we'll stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. So we won't attack Kendrick and see if we could kill it off. Right. Yeah, because I thought that was interesting when I watched the uh, Black History Vanguard or the Black Panther Vanguard series. They were talking about the men, um, you know, took the step back and put the women at the forefront. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the Black Panther Party, you think about when when they're controlling the narrative, you think that it's a violent situation where it's these men toting these guns and shooting at police or whatever but when you know the backstory of the true history that's definitely not the case it was the self-defense party of self-defense that was trying to defend the black family and, mm -hmm. and, and help to protect the nation or the community uh, aspect but there were a lot of prominent women so I thought that when she came out and made that stance uh, on a psychological level, representation level, um, and, and so many different levels, I think it just caused a big, a big problem. And they really didn't have anything on her to even come at her about it. It was more so just the reaction to it, like, like you were saying, how, why did she do that? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why did she do that? But they didn't come and really attack her. They attacked Jay. Just like I called it, they started calling him a drug dealer and a thug and, you know, all of that stuff. Because, I mean, even if a woman sold drugs, if Beyonce got caught with 40 bricks before, you say it now, you know, she, Beyonce got caught with 40 bricks. It's like, oh, oh, she must was transporting it from some guy that manipulated her. She didn't really do that. It's going to always bounce off of the woman. Exactly. You know, a president gets some head in the White House, he the bad guy. What if a first lady get her coochie ate by the butler? Right. You know, right. it's going to be something the president did wrong that caused her to do that. You feel <laughs> what me? did he do? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's going <laughs> to always bounce off of her. Yeah. But UEP Newton said that power is the ability to define a phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. So when you consistently see Things being able to bounce off of women, namely black women, and you can't stain them. And then you see how with just a small stain, it could even be made up like in the Bill Cosby case. Mm -hmm. How you could pull a black man down with the slightest stain. It makes more sense to push a woman out front. Exactly. You can't stain her. Mm -hmm. And you don't kill the idea. As the man dies, the idea dies. If you could kill the man's character, you kill the idea. That's true. You can't kill the woman's character, so you can't kill the idea. That's true. Throughout history, they've taken down so many of the black leaders because of the penis. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because of the penis. And it's and Francis Cress Welsing had touched on it in her book. Um, but I mean it's really just this uh you're right. With as far as the black male, the penis, you know, Michael Jackson, Elijah Muhammad, um, Bill Cosby. I mean, it's always tied to to the penis. It seems when it comes to breaking down the black man, it's nothing. MLK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesse Jackson. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's like it's nothing more vile than a than a black man who misuses his penis. Nothing. 
And you know, the funny thing about that word misuse is whose rules are we basing that on? Exactly. You feel me? So when you see a man that's married, but then he's pursuing another woman that's, you know, outside of that marriage, you don't know that man's views on life. He may be Muslim. His father may be from a country where polygamy is allowed. Right. So he's pursuing another woman in the realm, you know, in a positive realm of his psyche. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not doing anything wrong. But when you take in what he's doing and applying it to European law, and you know, when we deal with law, we're not talking about good or bad. We're just talking about rules. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's breaking a rule. And so any person willing to break a rule is, isn't worth listening to. Mm -hmm. That's how you crumble a black leader. Mm -hmm. You kill the message. He broke a rule with his penis. Mm -hmm. He's not living according to how we have been taught to believe he should be with that thing in his pants. Right. You know? And since he isn't, he's not worth listening to. Yeah. And you know, and it's really psychological and, and it's just historically, this is just how it constantly plays out because when you crumble the king, you crumble the kingdom. And, you know, when you look at the oppressor's history, um, they didn't really view their women in any high regard. You mm -hmm. know, the liberation movement, the feminist movement, that all comes out of the Caucasian woman. Uh, yeah, the Caucasian woman and the lifestyle. And why they're so, they have so much anger in them is because when you look at old cartoons, you see the caveman with the club in one hand and he's dragging his woman with the other hand. Mm -hmm. um, and when you look at the harsh conditions of the cave and the mouths to feed that you had to deal with as far as dealing with the woman, and, you know, if you, the only pleasurable thing you could have is sex, you know, mm -hmm. in that particular um, harsh situation. But when you do that, you have a child to feed. So that's how they looked at their women. And somehow that infused into our situation i don't know any other race that has to have books or movies to depict books on how to love a one man another and how to love a woman and how to submit to that man i don't hear any other race talking about how i'm independent can you take care can you pay my bills it's just a, a un unspoken thing that they just have an understanding of and it seems like with us because of the outside influence we have to go through these type things to get back to our true essence and true nature yeah I mean that's just Willie Lynch and modern day Willie Lynch and, um, I think the word cheating alone is an extension of Willie Lynch syndrome a lot of people won't look at it this way, but when you go back to the crack epidemic mm -hmm. and um, a black fa African American father, you know, got on drugs, the thought process inside of the home with the mother and the children was we got to clean daddy up and get him back into the house. You know, so it's like, we'll go to meetings with him. We'll go pick him up off the street corner and clean him up and feed him and, you know, try to get him back into the house, mm -hmm. being productive. Mm -hmm. But what they do to a cheating man, mm -hmm. he got to get out the house and away from the kids. Get out the village. Exactly. You feel me? Mm -hmm. He's a cheater. Mm -hmm. You know, the word cheat implies that you, bro you, you, you messed up the rules of the game. And I told a woman once, if you can call me a cheater, I'll tell you we was playing games from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is that a woman is not attracted to a man that can't get other women. So they wanted to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it's funny, man. It's funny. And see, this is what, this is where writing comes back in. I, I, I'd write that. Yeah. You know, I did that in my first book. I really, I displayed that whole using other women's attraction to you as a man to get one specific woman. Yeah. You feel me? And most women don't think that we as men see that. <laughs> but that also goes back to not having 
African American male representation in the literature, the media, mm -hmm. on television, maybe even on radio, because we can we could say that, right. like no, you like to sleep with men behind other women. Yeah, this is a fact. Now, saying it out your mouth, you'll say, I don't. Mm -hmm. But it was proven three years ago, unbeknownst to a lot of people that. Um, a brother went to a church here locally and he went in there suited and booted as if he's trying to find the Lord sat by himself didn't talk to anyone you know of course after so long one woman at least going to make her way over towards him if he's an handsome brother he caused a race to amongst the women. And within like 12 weeks, he has slayed maybe eight to 10 women. Some even married. You feel me? But in my opinion, this is my honest opinion, I think it's another one of those scenarios where we fight in nature. You know, the, it was, um, was it Ramses II was allegedly had 70 wives? Maybe or something like that, if I read that correctly. If I remember the numbers correctly, 70 wives. Meaning that all of the women wanted a piece of the pharaoh. Mm. And so in my honest male opinion, also from a research standpoint, is that when I was researching writing my book, I've come to understand that um, a lot of women aren't confident in being able to find the alpha male. Mm -hmm. So they watch what other women do and they'll have certain women in their mind. Like, I think she knows who we should be dealing with. And so they'll watch her go deal with a guy and they just follow suit. Mm. You know? Mm. I'd rather be a part of her and him because she picked the alpha than to be out finding myself dealing with a guy of my choosing that may not be the alpha. Yeah, and I think that's interesting because, you know, women do find attraction in men that have a lot of women under their belt. But <clears throat> when you talk about polygamy, most women ain't going to say that they're with polygamy. And if it came up on a ballot or if it was something that they had a vote in to say whether to go with it or not, even though they're against it, and it doesn't have anything to do with you. If you don't want to do that, then you find a man that's on monogamy. But they'll vote against that. But when it comes to something dealing with homosexuality, even though they aren't homosexual themselves, they would vote for it and say that, well, that's their right and they should be able to do it. And so they'll be um, supportive of that agenda, but they wouldn't support for polygamy, even though it's been proven that men have held down multiple households since the 60s, you know what I'm saying? They got outside kids that they still take care of outside of their home. Or these women would deal with a dude who has multiple women. He's a he's a habitual cheater, you know what I mean? But you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to stay with him. It's been proven. You keep complaining to your girls how he ain't shit, but you ain't going nowhere. And they getting tired of talking to you, having the same conversation with you. So you find somebody else to complain to, and you just keep finding these dudes that's still on this stuff. But when you find a straight let's dude that's also monogamy, it's almost as if you're so tainted that it's almost like they don't know what they want. Um, I dropped this bomb in my second book. And let me see if I could quote it correctly. It says that, and this is an African sister, a native African sister speaking with an African American sister. And um, the African sister said that um, you think that I'm a fool for being one of four wives, but you pri you find promise in being one of eight baby mamas. We live in a polygamous society. Mm -hmm. It's just an unspoken thing, <laughs> right? You know, and it's like polygamy is one of those trigger words. It just sounds like you shouldn't be doing it, even though you're doing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, of course, they won't vote for it because it would seem like, okay, that means that I'm for it. Mm -hmm. 
But at the same time, a man with eight children by eight different women, according to how everyone believes they think, he should never have his ninth child by a ninth woman. If he lied, maybe and said he didn't have any kids, but I mean, if it's if it's public that this man has nine children or eight children by eight different women, he shouldn't get his knife woman. He just shouldn't. And the crazy part be when you see that man get not only his knife woman, but a cream of the crop woman. You know what I mean? A woman you would think, according to the way everyone believes they think and act and react, that he definitely wouldn't be. A suitor for her. But he is though. You know what I mean? And I mean that's the beauty of life though. You you have to understand. What you do. Versus what you believe you do. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we need that. Honest male. Representation because. While everybody's spinning emotionally. And that goes back to the homosexual thing. Like you said. They'll vote on something for homosexuality because it's an emotional thing. When you're dealing with women, you're dealing with, you know, abuse, you know, someone's father may have touched on them, brother may have touched on them, a baby daddy, a husband used to beat them. So just that word abuse alone, it makes you sad with people who you feel are being abused. So when I tell you that homosexuals are being mistreated, it makes you remember that you've been mistreated. So it's like, okay, well, I'm going to side with the person that's mistreated. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And, so, and it's kind of unfair because from a man's perspective, a strong man's perspective, we're not supposed to have emotion. We're not supposed to have things to um, get to us or bother us. We're supposed to be strong and things of that nature. A lot of things that we deal with as men being at the front of the household as we should, uh, we don't bring a lot of those problems home. But when we show it or when we do give a little bit of uh, secret information or, or something that's vital to us, that's, that's key to us, it seems as though we're looked at as either weak or um, if, we, if we express it and it's disrespected or it's not accepted, then we act out in other ways, whether it be cheating or doing whatever. And like you said, we get ostracized or we get labeled when a woman does things it gets deflected if a woman cheats it's because well, what did the man do you know if the woman is emotionally hurt or whatever what did the man do but it's never an issue of what did that woman do to that man to make that man this way or make him react that way as if we don't we're not human in that in that case or in, in that situation um i made this statement a couple of years ago and a couple sisters um, unfriended me on Facebook as a result of it. Mm-hmm. Um, when Solange attacked Jay Z, <laughs> right? <laughs> and um, I showed everyone how she actually gained endorsements after the attack. Hmm. You know, because the sentiment of this country is kick this big black bad black man's ass. You know, everybody clapping for her. Beat his ass. Beat his ass. Whether he's right or wrong, beat his ass. He just need his ass beat. He's a black man. Beat his ass. He must have done something for her. You know, who cares about the fucking struggles of the black man? You know? And they impregnated that in everyone's mind. And that's why I encourage sisters to read because the sister Michelle Alexander in the New Jim Crow, in her book, The New Jim Crow, she touched on that. She said that you know, I can't remember, she said it was in the 60s or early 70s, she said that white supremacist society started promoting the image of the no good criminal drug dealing black man, not only to whites, but they promoted that image to African American women and African American elderly. So they ostracized the black man to his own people, right. you know? And so once they done that, and then, you know, you come with the fair housing acts and all the different programs to give women welfare and housing, and, you know, you take care of the seniors, and, you know, there was never any care for black men. Right. 
now. And still to this day, there's no care system or support system for black men. And so once you have that thought process in everyone's head, like, pardon my language, but fuck these niggas, you put him out on an island away from everybody, you could torture him like you do in a prison system. And no one cares because you've already been trained not to care. And a lot of people don't see that, but that's why history is so important. Hitler did the same thing to the Jews. Mm -hmm. He did the same thing to the Jews. He used propaganda, propaganda yeah. to separate the people emotionally from what he was about to do to the Jews. America did the same thing to the African American male. They used propaganda to set in movies like New Jack City, you know, where the pastor, the old male pastor who Nino treated like shit ends up being the one to kill him at the end and it's like, yeah, fuck Nino, you know. You show that, you put that man out there on that island, you kill him all off, mm. you know. Yeah. And who cares? Because you already taught him not to care. So that's just like in Germany back then during the Holocaust. It's like, you done heard so much bad about the Jews and they done gave you so much propaganda about the Jews. When you hear that they just burnt two million of them, it's like, who cares? Yeah, they deserve it. They deserved it. Yeah. You feel me? The same detachment that they, they, they use with African Americans and Native Africans mm -hmm. promote them as savages to us here. Meaning when you go exterminate a whole race of people in the Congo, mm -hmm. to us, they were savages. Head hunting people, you know, cannibals. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You desensitize people. And currently, I don't want to sound quote unquote weak like everyone likes to throw around, but they've done that to the black man. You're right. You know? And even, you know, I'm a strong guy. Like, I've seen people and I've had women come for me, you know, via social media just because they might not like my strong male opinion on a topic mm -hmm. and you know they'll say things like ugly motherfucker you da -da 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 -da. and me I can take it but I also know how to dish it mm -hmm. and you know I like to pay attention to reaction you know so when you call me ugly and I call you fat <laughs> and I watch you go crawl in your hole you know what I'm saying I could go on being ugly cause you know an ugly guy can still be handsome yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we do. don't bear that burden of physical beauty, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, watch what you say. Understand your strengths. Understand your weaknesses. Because I surely, I understand mine. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> you call me broke, I call you ugly. Mm -hmm. Now we both got issues. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> right, right, right. True indeed, true indeed. Um, Man, this was a powerful episode, brother. Um, unfortunately, we've run out of time. We are the solutionaries. I am King Used to the Seventh Power. And I am Arthur Felipe Morris. And until next time, uh, where can they get your books, brother? Um, my books are available at Amazon.com, Everyone Plays Chess. And they're also available at Hard to Knock Shop over on Hopper Street. All right. Peace. Peace.